looks like they serve food. All the girls decided for some reason that we wanted to eat together and that is the first time I found out that everyone is so different. This, this, oh it's like something. First meal in Beijing and we decided to go out and find a restaurant off campus. That was hard. We all kept doing thumbs up for okay. And they thought that meant one. That didn't work out too good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Because this is like one in Chinese. And we were like, it's okay. We had to point up pictures on the menu because we couldn't read anything. And we were trying to decide if this was chicken or not. We had an argument of that. And we ended up getting chicken and a beef thing. The poor, poor lady. And you couldn't drink water. Yeah. So. Depends. Good work there, guys. Oh my god. Thanks. <sighs> Umart. I love to Umart. <laughs> they wouldn't let me take water in. I found these shrimp flavored lays. There's a second level underground. Oh my goodness. And all of it's in Chinese and you have no idea what you're buying. But I did manage to find some moon pies and some Oreo cakesters. You can get, I think that's lime milkshake flavor, mango and orange. They got the sprinkles, raspberry and blueberry. And top it off, peach and grape. Are we ready? Yummy. Mm -hmm. They're good. You're right. Oh, you see it, man. He really wants to. He loves the girl. I just want to grab my baby. <laughs> American perspective, we're used to like a 50 minute or a 90 minute class, but we were in that room for like two, two and a half hours, maybe three hours sometimes. Long, but they contained a lot of useful information and a lot of things that helped you understand the culture a lot better, I think, in some ways. The teachers were all super nice, and that one teacher made us those butterflies. So Bye -bye. It was it was really informative. I learned a lot about China and the history and culture. Okay, yeah, pretty good. We found the right bus. <laughs> Raymond was our tour guide in Beijing. <gasps> oh, I love Raymond. <laughs> he was like a sphere of nothing but goodness. Not that he's chubby or anything. He was he was pretty toned up individual. I really enjoyed spending time with him. He didn't have any note cards. He'd explain everything in great and, detail. Uh, I am Raymond. Uh, is it clear? This mic? Yes. yes sir. Okay. I want to talk more about the Forbidden City because the Forbidden City is much bigger than the Tiananmen Square and also much more important than the Tiananmen Square, the Forbidden City. We are tourists <laughs> A lot of Chinese people. That was really, like, honestly my only expectation. He was put into jail from 1945, five years in Moscow. Tiananmen Square um, was really go interesting going there because it has such negative connotations. I expected it to be that way there. Like you should go there and feel almost oppressed or things of that sort. You know, it's just this huge square where all the Chinese people, you know, you can tell they're proud of it. And it's it's really a positive symbol there. I think that really changed my perspective. In 1911, when the last emperor was, he was overthrown. From then on, we called China, Republic of China. Oh. 
blonde girls. I'm gonna give you my baby so you can take a picture with it. Cause good luck. No, look, he's a celebrity. Yeah. Did you see the back of his head? Yes, I did. Oh, the crack baby. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's what I call it. I feel like a celebrity most of the time when we were in China and Japan for that matter because everybody was like, oh, Americans, let's take pictures with them. You know, a lot of people keep coming up and taking pictures and then they just kind of jump in the pictures and grab you and they're like, take a picture with my baby. Lots of people taking pictures of us, which was really strange, but kind of also lots of fun. Until you realize that they view you as some kind of strange foreigner and that's why you're exotic and interesting. So. I know it's surprising, but it wasn't, it wasn't all this. There are lots of people, and I'm kind of sweaty because I think they're all judging me because I'm wearing a hat like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But it was really interesting being able to see the, you know, the picture that everyone thinks of China which is the, the picture of Chairman Mao atop the Forbidden City. It's pretty awesome. It's kind of like huge and magnificent. And I just keep thinking what it would be like to live here, kind of having like my own Mulan moment. Dr. Adams, are you liking the Forbidden City? Well, yes, it's uh, unforbidden now. It's really fantastic. Just look at all the, the intricate woodwork up there. Okay, so we are heading the Forbidden City. And the first, so we, when we were out there, all the buildings. Even this pillar, that's uh, wood, all made of wood. Okay. Wow. Wow. It just keeps going. Okay. It's just like courtyardception. It was, it was incredible. The higher to the bigger, the more in the heart. It's big. Those like, buildings were made so long ago in such grand detail. And I was kind of jealous because like, America doesn't have that at all. I guess I'll do it here on this. Do you like? What is that? Baby, baby. One, two, three. We had to go through several different gates just to get to the main area. And then even after that, it was kind of like. Huge. <laughs> it's really big. Start in eighteen sixty. The Anglo French light of course. died here, concubines have walked on the stones that I am now walking upon, and what else? There was an emperor here, and the Forbidden City was forbidden. Do I mention there were concubines? When you go to the Chinese Garden, this kind of rock is very common. All of them have this kind of rock. This rock is shaped by lake waves. Yeah, lake waves. This is all of them in natural shape. It was quite an adventure crossing the street, I tell you what. <laughs> got like really scared by it. I just kind of just walked across it. <laughs> okay, that was wild. I love it. We don't cross streets like that. I love that. That's intense. You looked both
both ways, kind of said a quick prayer and just spray it. Oh, the professor is still across the street there. Go save Dr. Adams. Other oh, stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Raymond. It didn't seem to be too many accidents in Beijing, so it didn't really scare me. Watch out when train across the street, because they don't stop. <laughs> yes, please. What time is it on uh, their time? 7.30. So if, if a group of 30 could film, you need to find this place called Cat's Eye Pizza, it's and you need, an you need to eat there, even though it's a little expensive. Oh my word! And you need to bring a sharpie so that you can uh, commemorate your group on one of the walls. Yeah. How do we find this? That doesn't have. I found it several spots. Yes, it does. Thanks, we're on TV. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> I have to go way up there. Can you go